Let's see if we can find a real hexagon to do some analysis on. Now there happens to be one at the western tip of uh, Western Australia. So if we just zoom in using Google Earth and just at this little nip here, it's called Exmouth Peninsula. And if you look up Exmouth Hexagon in Google, you can find out all about it. What have we actually got here? Wow, it's it's big, um, but how big? So we can use Google Earth's measuring tool here to show a ruler and uh, let's do meters, that'll do fine and if we go from here to here, it sometimes needs two clicks to get itself going and uh, it's over a kilometer long, it's, it's, it's a pretty large structure. Uh, let's see what we've actually got here. I'll just close that down um, if we continue to zoom, you can see what happens. You can start seeing buildings and it, it switches to a different mode. Um, now, even though I've turned on 3D buildings and everything else, this used to have uh, an image of the huge towers that there are here that actually make up this aerial complex. Uh, but never mind. Uh, let's go back to exit ground level and out again. Now, to get this into autograph, first of all, uh, you notice that it is actually nice and level here but if I double click on the end to make it northerly you see that it's a bit off uh, and if you press control and drag you can adjust it round a bit so that's going to look perfect. Now we want to get this image into autograph there are various ways of doing this you can use the print screen if you're on a PC um, or snag it's a good application uh, but not everybody knows that Jing will do still images as well as videos so I'm just going to move this to the top here and you can see that Jing lives here in this sort of sun shaped thing and you just press capture and mark off the bit you want which is say there and then you get the choice of either capturing an image or a video so I want an image and there it is uh, you could name it and save it if you wish but actually all we want to do is put it on the clipboard so I'll move this back down to here again and open up autograph and uh, this is actually the um, situation we're going to study in a moment but all I need to do is open up a new page and right click paste and there you've got it. Uh, we don't really want any axes because we're just going to put things on top of this. So that appears to be a nice hexagon and right click don't show the key down here. Now you notice that uh, having taken that off we've now lost the aspect of this so what I should have done let's just undo that take it back to where we were and that's correct we do need to uh, double click on this and just make sure at the moment it's scaling with the axes if we do anything with the axes it's going to mess up the picture so take that off and that'll always stay where it is now for example I want to do equal aspect not that I'm really using the dimensions of this but I can do that and I can take this off and you can see that it survives all right, now I want to put points at each corner. Um, at the moment, the points are set to go, if I just show you, they're actually going in point ones, which may not be quite enough flexibility. So uh, something that uh, uh, not many people know about is if you go to Axes Snap Settings, you can set them to a custom of, in this case, 0 0.01 in each direction. That should give us plenty of flexibility. So I'm now going to put a point at each corner, each vertex. One there, one there, one there. Here we go. Then I'm going to select them all and right click group to a shape. If I single click on this and right click edit the draw options, I can make the gradient up to say 80% that's better, I can see through it nicely. While we're at it, let's just see if this is an accurate hexagon. Uh, these points have been put on by eye. It looks like this one could move just a tiny bit over there and otherwise they're pretty good. Maybe that one to here. Okay, so let's have a look at this angle from here to here and then anticlockwise to the third one and right click angle don't need to reflex and OK. OK, that's in radians, so let's just switch that to degrees. Uh, look at that, bang on 120, not bad. And uh, 
it looks like it's a pretty good hexagon to me. Now you may notice that there's another hexagon inside so the task might be to uh, see if students can work out the transformation that's going to make this hexagon transform into this one. Well it appears to be a bit of rotation and then a bit of scaling so let's just see how that would work. Uh, to do a rotation we need to put a point at the middle where that control hut is. So we select that point and we select the shape and right click rotation. Uh, we're in radians at the moment. In the standard level that would be degrees by default but we'll change the degrees now. Right click rotation. Okay, so what angle is it likely to go around? Well, if you think about it for a second, it's going to be this angle here, which is 30 degrees. So we'll change that to 30, and round we go. We didn't really want the construction lines, double-click, so we'll take those off. What this does show, of course, is the construction lines are indicating that it's not. we didn't draw a perfect hexagon to start with. And again, we'll click on that and right-click edit draw options and give it some transparency. So the next thing is to take this and bring it in. So I'm going to select that and select this and this time I'm going to do an enlargement. Well I'm just going to make a guess of say 0 0.5. So once again we didn't want the double click the correction lines, not that one, it's this one we don't want don't show the construction lines, that's better. Uh, but once again select it and right click edit drawer options and about 80 degrees, there we go. So if we select this one notice that when, you, when we keep click clicking various objects because they're all on top of each other it's quite difficult to be sure which is which. Um, that one's lit up so it's not that one but keep clicking and that one's lit up keep clicking and this one should light up and then to deselect the other ones just go around one at a time deselect them so now we've got this one definitely selected and the animate object has woken up that means that we can animate the factor the scale factor here and we need to just bring it up a tiny bit until it hits that now going in point ones might be sufficient in fact, it looks like it's done it straight off. So this one appears to be a, a scaling factor of 0.6 of this one, which is rotated 30 degrees from the original. So that's the way to get from the blue one to the green one.